If you're so absurdly wealthy that anything in this list doesn't seem like some kind of fever dream and may look like something you'd be interested in purchasing, then perhaps you actually do have too much money. I know that it's controversial, but there may be such a thing as having too much money. Have a look at the list and tell me I'm not right. From a mini vehicle carved from solid gold to an $8.5 million mansion that's too small to even live in, here are 15 of the most expensive toys in the world. Number 15. Gold Lamborghini Aventador LP704. It takes an optimist, or maybe even a chancer, to attempt to sell a model of a vehicle that's carved from solid gold for almost $7.5 million, before the thing's even been made. Now I guess that German artist Robert Gulpin has a bit of the opportunist side in him as he proposed the creation of a Lamborghini Aventador LP704, except it was his own version that would measure 25 inches long and would actually cost 16 times more than a full-sized one. So in short, although the car would be made of gold, you couldn't technically drive it. It doesn't really sound like some kind of bonkers idea, then I don't know what does. Gulpin created an even smaller prototype version of the golden vehicle that he sent on a tour of wealthy places, all in the hopes of enticing a buyer to commission the bigger version. This little prototype is so valuable itself that it has to have a record-breakingly secure bulletproof display cabinet wherever it goes. Let's hope that this is one golden carriage that doesn't turn back into a pumpkin at the stroke of midnight. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Diamond Barbie Jewelry designer Stefano Canturi was commissioned by toy makers Mattel to make the most expensive Barbie in the world. Quite the design brief, a basically blank check. The Australian designer spent six months working on the design for Barbie's special collar necklace, which has a unique pink diamond as its centerpiece. This piece of jewelry alone is made with white diamonds, which surround the emerald cut one carat pink diamond, which is called Fancy Vivid, and comes from a diamond mine in Australia. Apparently, the rare gemstone alone is valued at $300,000. As an agreed part of the scale, Kenturi stated that all proceeds would go to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Whoever had the winning bid on the doll would receive a piece of jewelry specially designed by Kenturi himself so that a human could wear the diamond. That's if Barbie will actually share, of course. You know, she can be such a diva sometimes. Kind of sad though in the end, because when Diamond Barbie sold at auction, she achieved a disappointing $250,000, much less than the original estimate. Still though, hopefully she made a good donation to a worthy cause, and Barbie got to strut her stuff. Number 13. The Masterpiece Cube Usually, records being broken by Rubik's Cubes are about how quickly they're solved, but this Rubik's Cube is breaking other kinds of records. This is the world's most expensive Rubik's Cube, the Master Cube. Created in 1995 for the 15th anniversary of the original Rubik's Cube, the Master Cube was designed by Fred Coulier, a jeweler from Houston, in cooperation with his Diamond Cutters International. It took a team of 26 people over 8,500 hours to craft the jewel-encrusted toy. It has 25 gems on each of its so-called stickers. They used white diamonds, green emeralds, blue and yellow sapphires, red rubies, and purple amethysts, with this color replacing the standard orange on an original, regular Rubik's Cube. 25 gems on each of the nine stickers on all six sides? That sums boggled my mind, but it makes up about 1,350 gemstones stones with a whopping 185 carats of diamonds. Oh, and the whole thing is set in an 18 carat white gold setting too. However, since the Master Cube is valued at two and a half million dollars, I can't really imagine it's ever going to be played with. Can you? Number 12. Handmade Rocking Horse 
People have been building rocking horses for centuries. It's not uncommon as a gift for a child amongst many different cultures. Handmade rocking horses do often become a much treasured family heirloom and may be played with by generations of children to come. So what's so special about this particular handmade rocking horse? Well, it's only made out of solid ruddy gold, that's what. I suppose that when Jay-Z and Beyonce welcomed their child Blue Ivy into the world in 2012, she was destined to be on the receiving end of some pretty unique gifts. It does go without saying that this baby was going to be blessed. The rocking horse in question would be created by a famous Japanese jeweler by the name of Ginza Tanaka after being commissioned by Blue Ivy's daddy Jay-Z for a massive $600,000. The couple's little girl would be given a beautiful and diamond-studded start in life, and despite the price tag, this golden rocking horse is certainly made to play with. Like all new parents, Beyonce and Jay-Z wanted only the very best for their baby, and when you're celebrity royalty, that includes gold. Lots and lots of gold. And why not? Number 11. Golden Monopoly Set so from a golden gift from doting parents to a solid gold board game, there seems to be a theme developing. I'm just guessing, but I reckon gold is fairly pricey. Although where I have no quarrel with a golden horse, there is something kind of obscene about this golden Monopoly set. Did you know that Monopoly the game was actually originally developed in 1903 by a political activist by the name of Elizabeth Maggie, whose The Landlord's Game was created to demonstrate how an economic system with monopolies will actually bankrupt the many and enrich the few? It sounds eerily familiar, doesn't it? Then, when the game idea would be taken over by Parker Brothers, they dropped the aspects that showed that there were any alternatives to the Monopoly system, and the present-day board game that we all know, and apparently hate, was born. I'm serious, people. Monopoly turns friends into enemies. Then, back in 1988, of course this happened in the 80s, a jeweler from San Francisco had the bright idea to create a 23 karat gold-plated Monopoly board. The board itself is gold, as are the title cards, the houses, the hotels, and the dice. There are diamonds, sapphires, and rubies embedded liberally throughout the golden game pieces. The $2 million Monopoly set was officially certified as the most expensive in the world by the Guinness Book of World Records. And the game made of gold continues to be about making all the money and buying all the land and bankrupting everyone else. Wow, such fun. Number 10. Astolat Dollhouse Castle an $8.5 million mansion boasting 29 rooms across seven stories, including a wine cellar, a grand ballroom, a bar, and a music room? Standard expensive house stuff, I suppose. But hang on a moment. Even if you can afford to buy it, you're not going to be able to live in it. But with such a high price tag, if you could afford this house, perhaps you could also get yourself a shrinking ray and make yourself tiny enough to move in. <laughs> What's that you say? This house is not for you. Unless, of course, you're a couple of inches tall. This is the Astolat Dollhouse Castle, and it's the most expensive dollhouse in the entire world. Handcrafted in the 1970s by master craftsperson Elaine Deal, the Astolat Dollhouse is stuffed with luxury, albeit miniature items. There are no IKEA cupboards in this building, thank you. Amongst the many treasures on display in this diminutive castle, there are literal antiques, fancy furnishings, and actual oil paintings. From seeing these pictures of it, you would think it was a stately home, perhaps a Downton Abbey for dollies. It's a real work of art in its own right. Just think of all that dusting, though. Number 9. Le Oiseleur, the Bird Trainer the title of World's Most Expensive Doll has been liberally chucked around in reference to Le Oiseleur. Tricky to say, but translates to The Bird Trainer, so I'm gonna call it that from now on, thank you. But this doll is no Barbie. It's creepy. Like a doll, obviously. Its eyes just seem to follow you around, like a doll. But hang on a minute. Its eyes are following you around. This is an automaton. 
a feat of precise and delicate engineering and just so happens to also be doll-shaped. Created by Christian Bailey in a Swiss workshop, the Bird Trainer Automation is four feet tall, dressed in Renaissance-style clothing of velvet and silk, and a face of porcelain with glass eyes. It also carries around a flute and a sword. So far, so doll-like. But it's what's inside the creation that makes the Bird Trainer so special. This thing is built with about 2,340 metal parts. These are spring-driven cogs and gears that make the automaton move. The whole system has no power source. It's completely driven by a sophisticated wind-up mechanism that runs the doll's multiple movements. The incredibly labor-intensive process of making this doll, as well as the enormous craft and skill required to design such a complex automaton, have drawn fans of this particular art form since its earliest creations way back in the 14th century. Nowadays, collectors have to be able to dig pretty deep to afford one of these guys and take it home. The Bird Trainer? Well, it's available for the bargain price of $6.25 million, although once you've seen him, he may stay with you forever anyway. In your nightmares. Number 8. Original G.I. Joe Action Figure the most famous soldier of all time, G.I. Joe, is also the most expensive action figure that's ever been sold. In 2009, the original G.I. Joe prototype from 1963 would be sold at auction for $200,000. This prototype was developed by a guy named Stanley Weston who was also responsible for creating products for Star Wars and Nintendo, amongst others, when he sold the G.I. Joe licensing to Hasbro in the 1960s. This was the real dawn of action figures as we know them today. The original concept was licensed to the toy company for $100,000 in 1963. Then, Weston was said to have remarked, you're going to make a fortune with these. And it turns out, he was probably fairly accurate in his prediction. Although the hammer price of $200,000 is a record-breaking figure, the sellers had anticipated a much higher final selling price for this unique toy, with original estimates coming in for the prototype in the region of a mind-bending 600 grand. But in reality, this GI was just more of a regular Joe than a soldier of fortune. Although he does still hold that most expensive record ever, and I don't think that he even came with a box. Number 7. Nintendo Wii Supreme as hard to come by as a PlayStation 5 might be, even this holy grail of consoles will be out of date and passe in a few short years' time. And given the speed at which gaming consoles come and go in and out of fashion and, well, obsolescence, it seems somewhat reckless to cast any of them into solid gold. However, someone, somewhere, always has to take things a little bit too far. And in this case, it was a British designer by the name of Stuart Hughes. Back along, Hughes was famous for dipping all kinds of electronics in gold. The guy was a regular gold finger, going around gold plating stuff like iPods, mobile phones. And in 2009, he decided that next on his list would be a gaming console. Although I guess that back then the Nintendo Wii was the obvious choice, I'm not sure how it's weathered the test of time though. Do you still have one? I mean, I do. Anyway, Hughes spent six months creating the Nintendo Wii Supreme out of two and a half kilos of solid 22 karat gold and 78 diamonds. Only three would ever be produced and they were sold at the bargain price of 300,000 pounds, nearly a half a million US dollars. So I wonder how the most expensive gaming console in the world has fared in the last decade or so. Is the fate of a golden Wii the same as a regular one, or was it just money tittled down the drain? Number six, Shemansky Soccer Ball. To commemorate the 2010 World Cup in South Africa, some bright spark named Shemansky, a jeweler out of South Africa, decided that a soccer ball encrusted with diamonds was exactly what the tournament needed to make it sparkle. But just try to kick the thing. That's gonna hurt twice. Once when you break your toes on the diamond hard exterior, and secondly, when you're wrestled to the ground by security. 
This insane and utterly impractical football took a labor-intensive three months to make, as it was studded with 6,620 white diamonds, 2,640 black diamonds, and it was all worth a striking $2.5 million. What a bargain, and so useful. I mean, why not just give me two of the things? Hoping to catch the eye of some of the world's wealthiest people, the jeweler then also produced replicas of the diamond ball made with less pricey crystals, and these were auctioned off to raise money for South African charities. So if you were dazzled by the shiny disco ball, you could indeed take one home as a souvenir. However, I still wouldn't take a chance on kicking the replica. Number 5. The Most Expensive Teddy Bear it seems as though putting the Louis Vuitton insignia on literally anything is like a license to just print up money. So when historic German teddy bear manufacturers Steiff teamed up with the fashion label, it was only natural that their combined efforts were going to draw some attention. Almost unbelievably though, get it? The resulting teddy, complete with Louis Vuitton Mac hat and luggage, sold at auction in Monaco for $2.1 million. The bear then jetted off to Jeju in South Korea to be put on display in the Teddy Bear Museum. The bear is going to be right at home on the island, which is known for its luxury resorts and is a tourism hotspot, so she won't be short of any visitors. This teddy bear will never be cuddled, and that makes me just a teeny bit sad. She's never going to be given a dodgy makeover, dragged through the grass, or squeezed by a tearful child. She's forever destined to be displayed behind glass suffocating and looking beautiful and immaculately turned out, of course. But what is the teddy bear even for? Well, that's got to be the question about a lot of these toys, really. Has everyone just forgotten Toy Story 2 for pity's sake? Number 4. Madame Alexander Eloise, worth $5 million. Based on the books about the girl named Eloise who lives on the top floor of the Plaza Hotel in New York City, these dolls are available in a whole bunch of designs and with a huge selection of outfits to match every mood and season. But there are a few especially rare and unusual Eloise dolls out there in the world. In fact, there were just five of these particularly well-dressed dolls ever created. Doll maker and designer Madame Alexander created these very limited edition dolls. They're dressed in Christian Dior, Oscar de la Renta, and are dripping with jewels. It's even rumored that these super scarce dollies can command an astonishing $5 million. More unique than these expensive dolls was Madame Alexander herself. Born in New York's Lower East Side, she created her doll making business with the aim of producing some of the most beautifully crafted dolls that were also good to play with without breaking easily, as the dolls of her childhood had done. She was fiercely ambitious and quite the perfectionist. Her dolls were made using only the finest fabrics with accurate attention to detail. The Madame Alexander Doll Company would produce dolls which were based on many historical figures and amongst them a range of dolls that were inspired by the character Eloise from the children's stories of the mid 20th century. The company does continue to make dolls in a variety of shapes and sizes to this day, and Madame Alexander herself was immortalized as a doll in 2013 with a price tag of $1,500. Number 3. Gundam Fix Platinum for 250 grand. Anime and all the associated collectibles have some of the most dedicated and devoted fans and collectors on the planet, so it's not really a surprise that there are some really expensive anime collectibles out there. Gundam, for those of you who don't know, is a widely popular anime series featuring giant robots and a huge amount of merchandise related to the show is available. None so unique as this figurine though. Constructed from pure platinum, yeah, the really expensive stuff, you know? With a diamond on its head for good measure, this Gundam would be designed by Ginza Tanaka, the same jeweler that made the golden rocking horse from earlier, and he would be commissioned by toy maker Bandai. The figurine, which is constructed from 89 separate parts, measures a relatively small 125 millimeters, weighing at 1.4 kilograms, but costs a gargantuan $250,000. 
This Gundam was designed as a one-off piece though, and is not available in any of your local shops surprisingly enough, so you can stop counting out all the contents of your piggy bank now. Number 2. Titania's Palace This is a dollhouse created from a fantasy, made into a real world dream come true, fit for a fairy queen. The story of Titania's Palace is a sweet one. It was coaxed into this world by a man named Sir Neville Wilkinson in Ireland back in the early part of the 20th century. Wilkinson, by all accounts, was a huge, imposing man of six foot five, but he had a little daughter who saw fairies. So he decided to set about creating the Palace of Tiny Things, a skill that he called Tiny Craft. And Titania's palace is packed full of remarkable little objects, all beautifully realized and perhaps even befitting of a queen. Wilkinson promised his daughter that he would build a special palace to try to coax the fairy queen to come and live within the human world. This was no ordinary construction though, and was officially opened by Queen Mary in 1922. It then took off on a round the world tour, delighting audiences everywhere and raising money for child welfare. I can only imagine that Titania, the queen of fairies, was somewhat peeved when she rocked up on moving day, only to discover that her new pad had been dispatched on an international junket. Number 1. 1933 Monopoly Set We heard earlier about the origins of the board game Monopoly, but this is where the design for the modern day game seems to have originated and is the game concept that was finally bought by Parker Brothers and distributed by their company. Believed to be the earliest surviving example of the Monopoly board and its game pieces, this 1933 set would be designed by a man named Charles Darrow in Philadelphia when he lost his job during the Great Depression. In the beginning, he made the game sets entirely by hand, from drawing the playing surface and painstakingly coloring the sections to typing out the deeds for the properties and cutting out little wooden houses and hotels. It would take him a day to produce one or two sets, and then he moved production to a printer's where he made another 5,000 copies. Copywriting the design in 1933, Darrow then went on to sell the game to Parker Brothers and became a millionaire. This 1933 edition of Monopoly, complete with a round board and rules sheet, would be put up for auction with an estimate of sixty dollars to $80,000. It came from the collection of publisher Malcolm Forbes, his sons selling the items in homage to their father's love of capitalism. The hammer price for this game eventually reached $120,000, a capitalist dream come true, I suppose. Now I really don't know, but I think there's something a tiny bit sad about toys that have never actually been played with. Perhaps that's just me though. Maybe you collect vintage toys as well. And do you have any super valuable ones? Let us know all about it in the comments below. Be sure to check out this other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.